Here's example four with finding vertical asymptotes for trig functions in general. So example four, find the general equation for the vertical asymptotes of g of x equals negative eight cosecant of four pi x minus one, and then plus seven, and then find three specific equations of vertical asymptotes, okay? So we're going to approach this the exact same way we did examples one, two, and three. So notice here we have a cosecant function, so we haven't seen one of those yet uh, for this type of thing. So in example one, we did a tangent, then in example two, a cotangent, and in example three, a secant, now we're doing a cosecant. So actually, uh, just like examples one and three, we had a tangent and then a secant, um, whether you have a tangent or a secant, absolutely nothing changes. Okay, just like, uh, and similar to that, um, whether you have a cotangent or a cosecant, nothing will change. Okay, so if we change this cosecant to cotangent, uh, absolutely nothing in the problem would change at all, not one single thing. Okay, so we're going to start this the exact same way we started all the others. So what we do first is write uh, original as in the original equations of the vertical asymptotes for the original cosecant function. So for the original cosecant function, uh, just like for the cotangent function, and we did explain this in a few videos already, so we won't go through the details of why, but for the original cosecant function, the vertical asymptote general equation is x equals k pi. And the reason is because the cosecant function is one over sine, and sine of x equals zero when x is k pi, so that means cosecant is undefined, uh, which graphically means it has vertical asymptotes in this specific case. Okay, so x equals k pi, where k is any integer. Okay, so... Okay, so that's uh, for y equals cosecant of x. Okay, so just like we've been doing all along in examples one, two, and three, we take the entire expression inside of the cosecant and set it equal to k pi. Okay? And again, just like in the other three examples, um, the only thing that matters is which trig function is it and what's inside of the trig function. This negative eight makes absolutely no difference. Okay? It could be a positive eight, it could be a negative 123.7. It does not matter at all. It does not change the vertical asymptotes. Uh, this plus seven out here changes absolutely nothing. The fact that we're calling it g of x instead of just plain old y or f of x or h of x or capital F of x or whatever uh, makes absolutely no difference. The only things that matter are uh, what trig function is it? It's a cosecant and what's inside of it. Okay? So since it's a cosecant, that tells us that we have to use k pi. Okay? Just like cotangents also use k pi. So cotangents and cosecant use k pi. And then we take the entire expression inside of the cosecant, set it equal to k pi. Okay, so that's what we do for our new equation. So this is the original equation here. So then for our new one, so for the new one, let's maybe set aside a little bit of space there. Okay, so for the new one, what we're gonna do is take the entire expression inside of the trig function, four pi x minus one, and set that equal to k pi. Okay. So we're gonna take four pi x, minus one and set it equal to k pi. Okay. So again, it's the exact same thing that we've been doing. Just take the entire expression inside of the trig function, set it equal to k pi. Take the entire expression inside of the trig function and set it equal to k pi. So now we just, after we've done that, we solve this equation for x now. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so first what we wanna do is rewrite this equation without the red box. So that's going to be four pi x minus one equals k pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and add one to both sides. So let's zoom in also so we can see this more clearly. So four pi x minus one equals k pi. Add one to both sides and we get four pi x equals k pi plus one. Okay, now we divide everything by four pi. So uh, instead of, let's say, let's write it like this. So let's say we multiply everything by one over four pi. So what we're gonna do is say one over four pi over here and then everything over here gets multiplied by one over four pi, okay? So four pi is canceled over here, which is nice. Then we just end up with x equals, so distribute. So we have k pi times one over four pi plus one times one over four pi, okay? So we could simplify and uh, cancel the k's here and that would be kind of nice, but instead of doing that, what we should do, let's maybe get a common denominator here. So actually what's nice so remember, like we did in examples two and three, we got a common denominator. Um, instead of simplifying getting common denominator, let's, uh, we, only, we already have a common denominator, right? So we're, really what we have is k pi plus one all over four pi. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to be uh, x equals 
k pi plus 1 all over 4 pi. Okay. Okay, so really, uh, maybe at this step, it probably would have been better to just say over 4 pi over 4 pi, but uh, that's the benefit of hindsight, I guess. But anyway, so we didn't, did we have to do this? No, we didn't really have to do it like this. We could have canceled the pi's here and said k over 4 plus 1 over 4 pi, uh, but that's kind of a goofy uh, expression. But anyway, it doesn't really matter, but if we get a common denominator here, it saves us the trouble later on, so why not? You know, it really doesn't matter, though. Um, and actually, in this case, a common denominator is not going to be that helpful because we're going to have pi's and a plus one out here. But anyway, um, it really doesn't matter. But you know, we're already we already have it written down like this, so we'll just stick with that. So um, x equals k pi plus one all over four pi, comma k is any integer. Okay. So that's it for the general equation. Okay. Now we want to use this general equation to get. Uh, three specific equations, right? And how do we do that? Well, we just plug in three specific values of k. k, just like we've been doing uh, in examples one, two, and three. Although in example one, I guess we did five of them, but that's quite a lot, so we'll just, just been doing three since then. So anyway, what we do is now we set up a chart and we use three specific values of k. Okay, so it's going to be a k column and then a vertical asymptote column. Okay, so x equals k pi plus 1 all over 4 pi, so maybe let's go ahead and use k equals negative 1, 0, and 1. So again, we've been mentioning it, but since we have to find three specific equations of vertical asymptotes, what we do is we take our general equation, plug in any three specific values of k uh, one at a time. So k can represent any integer. Okay, well k does represent any integer. So it could be negative 1, 0, 1, or we could use really any three integers we want. Okay, but it's best to keep it as simple as we can. So when k is negative 1, what's going on? Uh, we have x equals, so k is negative 1, we have negative 1 times pi plus 1 all over 4 pi, which is really just uh, negative pi plus 1 all over 4 pi. Okay? And if you want, it's probably not a bad idea, but negative pi plus 1 is the same thing as 1 minus pi. So it's maybe a good idea to do that. Um, you really don't have to, but it's sort of uh, nicer. It's mathematically polite, uh, more polite anyway, to start an expression without a minus sign if you can. And also, if you write this too quickly, it could be kind of messy and it might look like you're trying to say this, which is a totally different thing, so be very careful about that. This is not the same thing as this, okay? So be very careful about that. Anyway, just some nitpicky details that it's good to see that every now and then. But, so anyway, uh, vertical asymptote, this is x equals one minus pi, all divided by four pi. And yeah, if you want, you really could split it up into two fractions, but you know, we didn't do that here uh, for no real good reason, I guess. But anyway, so, and again, negative pi plus one, so that's the same thing as positive one minus pi, so that's why we did that there. And uh, again, we mentioned it in examples one, two, and three, and we're gonna mention it again. So your answer here, it is the equation of a vertical asymptote, so it's not enough to just say blah, 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 one minus pi all over four pi. Okay, you have to say x equals this mess here. Okay, so it, it is a vertical line, so your answer has to be the equation of a vertical line. Okay, so x equals stuff, okay, not just plain old stuff without that, so it has to be x equals. Just like here, x equals a big old expression with k. Okay, that's your general equation for the vertical asymptotes. So since it's an equation of a vertical line, even though it's in general, it has to have the x equals. And just like here, these specific ones have to have the x equals. Okay. So, what happens if k is 0? Then we have x equals 0 times pi plus 1 all over 4 pi. 0 times pi is 0, so it's just 1 over 4 pi. Okay. So, x equals 1 over 4 pi. Okay, so that's what's going on there. So that's 1 all over 4 pi. And then what if k is 1? Then x equals 1 times pi plus 1 all over 4 pi which is just pi plus 1 over 4 pi, and can't, you can split it up into two fractions again if you want, but it's not really going to do a whole lot, it's really not going to help you a whole lot to simplify, but, uh, so that's just going to be x equals pi plus 1 all over 4 pi. Or if you really wanted to, you could say 1 plus pi to make it kind of uh, symmetric, so to speak, with 1 minus pi, so 1 minus pi, 1 plus, whatever, it really doesn't matter. So anyway, let's uh, find three specific equations of vertical asymptotes, that's what we just did right here. And how do we do that? Well, just like in examples one, two, and three, uh, just plug in specific values of k. Okay, so here's our general equation for the vertical asymptotes. To find specific equations, just choose specific values of k. Remember, k has to be an integer, though, so you can't choose like 1.5. Okay, k has to be an integer, so no fractions, no decimals. 
uh, it has to be something like 0, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 12, etc, etc. So just any integer. Okay, so just choose three specific integers to plug them, plug them into here one at a time, plug them into the general equation one at a time, simplify, blah, 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 and then you have your three specific equations. Okay? So that's example four for finding vertical asymptotes for trig functions in general.